Good morning. Welcome again to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or EWS. Today we're going to discuss the seventh activity under the magnetic conductors circuit. Okay, so let's click this menu and then let's scroll to activity number seven. So the title for this activity will be the holding lamp. So last time we discussed the holding circuit. Now we are going to connect a load, which is in this particular case here, a pilot lamp. Okay, so let's click the play. Okay, and then let's click the normal mode. Okay, so as what we can see in this particular uh, diagram, okay, we already have a holding contact. So in this particular case here, this one here, the normally open a uh, contact, the 13 and 14 connected in parallel with the PB2, which is a normally open, normally open push button, will serve as a holding contact. Okay, so we have two loads here, the PL3 and then the PL2. Okay, so let's explain the functionality of this circuit. So the moment you press this uh, PB2 here, okay? So, uh, okay, let's explain first if we start the circuit breaker, okay? So when we start the circuit breaker, as what we can see here, there, there is an open circuit here, open and open. So the current will not be able to flow to this KM1. So this KM1 will be de-energized, this PL3, since it is connected in parallel with this uh, KM1, hence this PL3 will be turned off, okay? However, the current will be able to flow through this line here since this is a normally closed KM1. So the current will be able to flow here through this PL2. Hence, the moment we start our breaker, this one is de-energized off, and then this one is only, uh, this pilot lamp is the only one which is turned on. Okay, de-energize off on. However, if you press this one here, you press and hold, hold first, if you press this one, this KM1 will energize. So if this one will be energized, this one KM1, the normally open contact here, which is serves as a holding contact, will close. So if this will close, the current now will now be able to flow through this line and this line here. Okay, so it will remain uh, in energized state no matter if you release this PB2 here. Okay, so if you press or release, so it doesn't matter, this PB2 here, this one is already energized. So since this is connected in parallel with your KM1, hence this PL3 will turn on. Okay, so energize, this one is on. However, since this one is already energized, this normally open, uh, this normally closed contact here will now open. See, since if this is open, okay, if this is open, hence this uh, PL2 will be turned off. Okay, so okay, so if you press this one, this one is energized, this one is on, this one will be off. However, if you want to uh, stop or de-energize this KM1, we have to press this PB1. If you press this PB1, so the current now will not be able to flow through this line because this one will be an open circuit. So the open line, so the current will not be able through to, uh, to flow through this part here. So this one will be de-energized, this one will be off, and then since this one is de-energized, the, this one will return to its normal state, which is normally close contact, hence PL2 will be turned off. Okay, so to make it short, the moment you start your breaker, this one is de-energized, off, and on. You press this one, press and release, this one will activate, energize, this one will on, this one will off. If you Press the PB1 here, this one will de-energize, this one will off, and then this one will turn on. Okay, so let's wire the circuit first, and then let's take a look at the functionality of this system by simulating it afterwards, okay? So we have to connect first this one, the uh, output of our circuit breaker to the fuse 2. Output of the circuit breaker to the fuse 2. Okay, so we have to do it line per line. Okay, and then the output of the fuse 2 will be connected to the input of the PB1, which is the normally close. Okay, the output here connected to the input of our PB1. Okay, and then the output of our PB1 should be connected to... So, we have to connect this line first, and then later on we connect this one, and then this one, and then we connect the last line. Okay, so we have to finish it first. So the output of our PB1 to the input of our PB2. So the output, input of the PB2. Next. Okay, so the output of our PB2 should be connected to the A1 of our KM1. Okay, so this one should be connected to the A1 of the KM1. 
one. Okay, and then the A2 of the KM1 should be connected to the fuse which is on the R side or fuse one. Okay, connected to the fuse. Okay, and then the fuse to the breaker here. Okay, so we now have to connect this uh, 13, 14, this holding contact here, 13 to the input of the PB2. So again, the 13 is located around here. So the, this is the 13, this is the 21. So the 13 input of the PB1. Okay, and then the 14 to the output of the uh, PB2, the input of the PB2, and then the 14 to the output of the PB2. So 14 to the output of the PB2. Okay, so we're done with the holding contact. Next, we have to connect in parallel this PL3 here. A1 and A2. PL3 is this one. So we have to connect uh, this one here, the input to A1, and then the A2 to the output of the PL3. Okay. Connect it like that. And then this one here, let's connect it to the A2. Okay. And then we can do this one here. So we can do this uh, 21. So we can connect this 21 through the output of the fuse 2, or I think it would be easier if we connect this one to the input of the PB1. Okay, let's take a look, which is much easier. Okay. So the 21. So this is the 21 here. So I think it would be easier if you connect it to the input of the PB1. Okay. Which is around here. Wait. Around here. And then let's connect it to the input. And the next is the 22. So the 22 of our KM1 normally close contact should be connected to the input of our PL2. Okay to the input of our PL2. Okay, let's do it this way. To the input of the PL2. Next is the output of the PL2. The output of the PL2, okay, we can directly connect it to the output of the PL3. Okay, the output can be easily connected to the output of the PL3. Okay. So let's try to uh, click the submit button. Okay, passed. So now let's try to simulate this one. So as of this moment, the circuit breaker is already turned on. So as what we can see, since they, this is a normally closed contact, this PL2 is already turned on. Okay. However, if you press this one here, the PB2, we can assume that uh, this PL3, or you can hear the word tuck, and then this PL, this magnetic contactor will be energized. And then this PL3, which is this one, should turn on. And at the same time, this PL2 should turn off. Let's try to press this one. Press muna. And then, even if I release my hand on this PB2, it will remain in energized state. And then it will remain in uh, turning on. This PL3 is still turned on. Okay, however, if you press this PB1, it will create a current interruption in this path. Hence, this uh, KM1 will be in de-energized state and then this one will turn off. If this one is in de-energized state, it will return to its normally closed uh, contact. Okay, so hence this PL2 will turn on. Okay, let's try to press this one. Okay, and then you click it again. Okay, release and then click it again. Okay, so see you in the next lecture.